Today I'm going to show you how to paint a cottage garden. Firstly, I'm going to wet the sky area with clear water and then add three different blues from my paint box and merge them gently together to give a sky that's not dominant because the picture is of the cottage and the garden. This cottage is on an island and when you're painting on an island there's lots more reflective light coming off the water and things can appear much brighter. To convey the brightness I'm going to tip the page with the wet paint on so that it runs off the top. Now I'm going to lift the paper up physically and then wedge it on something. Now that the sky is dried, I'm going to paint the chimney with homemade grey and some earth colours. And it's got a lip. Just work my way round. Now it's not the same grey all the way through, it's natural stone, it's got warm bits and cold bits, so I've mixed up some other colours here just to pop in. But if you can get the basic shape in and the colours that you hope it will be. Remember that there's going to be a lot of green going on here so it must show away from the warm green so some of it must be cool. Using the same principle as the first chimney just looking for highlights this one's got some lichen on. At the seaside you, you often see orange lichen. There's something here that isn't stone it's been weatherproofed or repaired it might be concrete I'm not sure but I'm using a much cooler grey than the natural stone just to show the difference it's going to have bright flowers around it so that will give it a background I've got a lintel and possibly a bread oven or a window in the end of the wall I thought perhaps a bread oven as it was next to the chimney but it's dark and recessed and it highlights the wall. It's a nice thing to put in. In fact, there's another dark recess on the other chimney breast. It's always interesting to put these nooks and crannies in. I've moved on to what's left of the cottage wall now. And this has got plants growing out of it and all sorts of nooks and crannies. So what I'm doing is putting on homemade grey to start with. Now I'm going to drop in some yellow ochre. Pigment will send the homemade grey back and give highlights. It also works quite well on harbour walls if you've got to paint any. But don't do too much at once. I work my way backwards and forwards. So put the grey on. It's my usual homemade grey yellow ochre, Brazilian crimson and French ultramarine and I'm not going 100% I'm letting the brush dance over the paper so that some bits are left because there will be other highlights to put on and this time I'm going to go back in with Naples yellow which is slightly different yellow don't worry if you haven't got it you can use you can use yellow ochre and back to some orange and yellow ochre Yellow ochre is probably the the best decision because the plants are going to be in competition with it and you've got to get the tones exactly right. So I want the wall a bit cooler. I'll just go back up to some of the bits that I've missed. Put more highlights in. And you can see the way the yellow is sending the other pigments back. I'm using the same colours to paint the curbstones along the road by the cottage. When that's all dry, I'm now going to move on to the headland, the other side of the water. To make sure that I put things in the right place, I've started with the beach on the other side of the bay. I've followed it along. It, it's always good to find something you can follow. Now it's easy to get the beach right because I can do it against the lintel on the cottage and there's some other cottages that are hidden under the hillside. So having put those in, I can put the green area in without worry of accidentally going over the space. While the beach is drying, I'm going to get some dark brown paint and 
put the little islands in. Now it's low tide so they will be quite dark brown but I don't want them to look like silhouettes so I'm going to take a flat brush and when I put them in I'm just going to lift a corner out a bit like some of this that we did with the yellow but just to lift it out with a brush so they don't look like silhouettes they look slightly vague. To put the islands in I'm changing to a number two brush and I've mixed up a mix of Prussian blue and raw umber to make a dark but distant brown. I've put the islands in roughly. And what I'm going to do is get the flat brush quite dry and just go underneath them to get a water line. It's where they would the, the tide will be up at a certain level and just gently put them back. I then just get the corner of the brush and just lift out a little bit. It might not show much at this stage, but it will just give an indication as to how they are three-dimensional when it's dry. But when they're completely dry, I'll go in with the turquoise water. The Isles of Scilly has very, very light sand because there's no rivers spilling out silt. And so the water does look quite turquoise. I'm now mixing the green for the conifers on the hillside. They're quite distant and there's a lot of green in this picture so I want it to be quite dark and distant so it needs blue and some Payne's grey to make it look distant. With a picture like this that's got an awful lot of greens in what I'm going to do is just do a scale. So I'm going to put it on a spare piece of paper And then I'll work the other greens in harmony from it. I'm using a number two round brush and I'm just gently going up because my reference shows that they are conifers. So they'll have pointy tops, adding a little bit more depth. They are a long way off, but they're an important part of the picture. Before I add any more green, I'm adding an old blockhouse to the top of the hill just to give it scale. The next thing I'm going to add are the brown rocks that are revealed at low tide, which will show up the lovely white sand. I'm continuing the rocks around the bay a little bit. I'm keeping the rocks very dark to give a contrast to the pier, which I'm going to put in next. I've added the pier, or the breakwater, and it's two colours because it changes colour when the tide's in and tide's out, and put the turquoise water in, which will set the tones for the shades of green as I use. I'm going to put the water in with two blues. I've got a uh, mid-blue and turquoise. I'm working from side to side to indicate the height of the water and any slight ripples. I'm varying the pressure on the brush to give a broken effect of the paint to make the sea look more realistic. I'm also changing the colour of the blue to indicate deeper and shallower water. To emphasise the pier I'm making the water more turquoise around it and feathering the paint out to allow for the plants. I've added the two blues I use for the sea to my chart of the greens that I'm going to use. To paint the hillside on the other side of the bay, for a change, I'm mixing Naples yellow with sap green. Because I want it to look further away and I'm not worried if the brush is jumping over the paper a little bit, leaving a few gaps. It's not a mown lawn, it's a hillside and lots of these hillsides are one colour one side because it's more exposed to the wind so you, you might find that if you're painting one that it's not symmetrical there's a lot of differences so I'm just putting a base coat on and then I will look out for clumps of grass 
and paths. I'm varying the greens to indicate that there might be a path or tufts of grass. We've got two or three different greens here. We've got some much more windswept area. And then more dark green underneath the trees. Because they're not going to be so dominant because I've got palm fronds coming out here, which I'm going to change brushes. And I'm going to use a rigger. Now the palm fronds are different colour greens and a good way of doing it is to mix a couple of the greens together with some earth colour. So the brush has gone quite wide at this stage, I'm not worried about it, I'll use it on its thin side to start with. I haven't... The next thing to put in is the bush at the end of the cottage. And then any gaps in the leaves that show white paper behind can be filled in. But I don't want to make it too dark and muddy. When you put the shape of a bush in, you've got to be sure that you're doing it exactly right. So you want to mix up a good colour first. I'm starting with sap green with a little bit of chrome yellow. And I've got a number four round brush and I'm going out from the wall but not filling all the gaps, just doing random shapes to show the curliness of a bush. It's not solid. It's got branches and leaves, different shapes. I'm applying a second coat of paint to the bush, which is dark green and a few drops of azillion crimson to give a few highlights and shadows and put some areas in here so that we've got some harmony in the picture. Got to lead your eye through and to the middle. So I'm just going to define those areas. I'm going to mix some blue in it to soften the green. And the plants that are on the outside of the wall are making a much softer green to show they're slightly further away. And then on the inside of the wall, I'm just going to mix some yellow with it. So I've got three shades of green there to show the three different areas. I've now got a variety of greens that I've used and I'm keeping a note of them because I don't want the middle to look a congested area. I want it to be calm and lead you through to the back of the picture. In order to keep the balance of the picture, I'm now going to put some plants in on the left hand side against the other chimney breast and then I'll gradually work my way into the middle. Because this is the Isles of Scilly, lots of the plants are tropical. So I'm just putting them in, in a different green, and the conical flower heads aren't quite out yet. I've just put in a nice gentle green. They produce blue, red or purple little flowers, but at this distance and scale, it's only the green that's showing. There's some interesting tropical plants here you wouldn't find anywhere unless it's very sheltered. So I'm just going in with the main trunk of this one and then gently putting in the foliage. I'm using a number two round synthetic brush. I'm just suggesting it, it is going over the blue sea but it doesn't really matter to that extent. Then it looks like it's almost got yellow baubles on it. So I'm going to put some Naples yellow in quite thickly. This is an open picture. It's a, 
don't necessarily want to be caught into the trap of putting in botanical details you just want to suggest things so now moving on to some sap green to give a suggestion of other foliage so i'm just going to use different strokes as i use blobs for the naples yellow it's different suggestion And what I can do is dry the brush off a little bit, get a good point, just do a few separate lines just to hide the sea a little bit more. I've got more echiums and I've got a wall, so going back to the dark green for the echiums. And they start from a central point and fan out. And they have quite long stems, which are quite hairy. So just by doing a few little things, I've got a suggestion of plants. Now I have got a large area of yellow foliage. So what I'm going to do is just pop some green in and let it dry. I'm going to mix a different green. I'm adding some mid blue to other foliage colours that I have already. I'm just going to put it in gently so that the yellow will go on top of it and it just give a hint of something showing through. Doing it with the side of the brush using very little water. So I'll change the direction of the brush to point outwards where it's going down. And what I'm going to do is paint in the negative. I'm going to try and do some spaces between the leaves. You could do this with latex. I think it's okay to do it like that. And then on top, I'll use a different brush. I'll use a flat brush and get some nice sap green and some chrome yellow. And just go between the dark lines. The dark lines will remain visible. Now moving to a smaller brush, moving to the rigger, and doing some upward strokes. plants sort of fall over a bit because some of the leaves are slightly obscured and behind each other. Loading the brush again, go up just to give a few dominant points, starting from the middle. I think I'll add a little bit more yellow to it. just looks like a well-established plant and I'm going to do sideways strokes just to emphasize the plant leaving gaps going over the green just a thinner brush just to give variety so it doesn't look too uniform Still going sideways because that's the way the plant's growing in swathes. And there's some other plants growing very close to it, which is a purple. So I'm changing brushes again, pick up some purple. And I'm only going to put in the flower heads. I'm going to leave room for the green and I'll go back afterwards and do that. So I'm just putting in random flower heads in order to keep it balanced I'm returning to the right hand side of the picture and I'm just going to 
put in some bushes that are growing from the building. Just going to suggest some. Don't have to do anything too definite because there's going to be foliage in front and then some brighter green foliage next to it. So we have to be careful with all the shades of green that you don't overdo it. Further in, it's easy to map these off with the pier. There are some entirely different shape leaves. So rather than change colour, I'm changing brush to a fan brush. And I'm just going to suggest... The bush. Let's claim the space. Now I can return to a bigger one. It matches the one I did on the left, which um, goes right up past the hillside opposite. So I'm going to start halfway with the trunk and then droops over at the top, just skipping the brush across the page. I'm moving to a smaller brush now, which is moving to the rigger, which I think will do the job better. It's got curvy branches. I'm only suggesting the base of it because it's the foliage that you actually see a lot more of. I've put in the tall plants that go over the sky and I've got some more of the conical echiums to put in here that are over the sea. I'm just re-wetting the area where the echiums are going to be with a flat brush and then dabbing it with tissue to remove the paint so I can put a different colour on. Now the echiums over here were green. The ones in the middle look as though they're going to be flowering soon or a slight different variety. They've got a red or purple tinge. And then in the middle I've got lots of various green plants that I just need to suggest. If you aren't sure and you haven't got all the right brushes or you can use a sponge, which I'll show you in a minute. I've got a packet of new sponges. They're quite big. What I'm probably going to do is cut one down. I've got an art sponge to do some of the foliage. Put it in a corner of it in one colour. And then the opposite corner in a different colour. So that I can put them both on together. I'll just show you this before I go onto the painting. I'm just going to dab it onto the paper. So it just leaves, because I've got two colours on there, it gets variety. Now, just dip it again, because I have more yellow than green. And I'm going to selectively pop it down around the plants I did earlier. Now what I can do is pop it in some brown and put in the shadowy areas at the bottom. Put it in the water, show it the tissue and then work back towards the brown. So it's not a hard line. So that's an instant row of foliage. I'm using some red paint in the echiums to start them off. It's just a hint, it's not much. There's quite a few of them, so I'll just start with the right hand side of them. Wash the brush. Return to the dark green and pop some in. 
was the shape of these plants that will give more visual impact than any colour changes. And I'm just making marks, not anything else but because it's the say so it's a shape that will give the colour and the impact. And they might need a second coat of paint to show up against the skyline, but I've got them in for now. And this reveals that the green foliage I put in can go higher. By gently going round with a little brush, I'm finding more and more flowers coming out the wall, little ones growing on top, a few little surprises. And just gently go round and pick them all up, don't rush. And I've got this side coming on nicely, that side's quite well defined. When it's dry, what I'm going to do is get some very runny paint and fill in some of the white. I can do the echiums now because they have dried and I've just got a cool green very puddly and I'm just going to pop it in the middle there so that there's not white showing it's all green there's almost nothing but it just makes it more solid now the yellow Can come up a layer now I can just get very strong chrome yellow on the brush and just gently go again just a tiny bit more same strokes doesn't matter if there's a little bit of paint on the brush it just adds to shadow because of the shape of the fan brush it can pick up paint from the next part of the paint box. You can always load a separate saucer or something with paint if you're particularly fussy, but it all adds to the painting. And I've got some more yellow down here which I can put in. Going over the wall. So I'll make the first coat of that just using half the brush because I want to be in control of the space. Now returning to the far wall, there's a gentle line on top, which must be something growing. So I'm going to put that in with dark paint and then get the water and just put a loose edge on it. The water will pull it back. And then the area around the stones has got, I think, a silver leaf plant on. So what I've got is a very weak blue. I'm just going to drop some in at random. And to balance the blue, I will add a little bit of red as a non-distinct patch of plants. And then moving forward, I've got more plants in here which are quite dark, but they're only halfway, so I'm going to make them half dark, not completely. So I've got a fairly dry brush, just popping them in. And again, when that's dry, I can put some green on just to fill the gaps. And then when it gets towards the middle, it's a different plant and it's much more vivid green. So I will move in, changing colour, cleaning the brush with water and then moving the paint around. So it's a distinct area. I can put a little bit around the dark plant as well. Okay, so we can now move over to this side, which needs some work, and this house leaks on the wall. The very colourful ones. So 
I'll do start the easy way. There's purple going round the corner, so I'm going to get some purple on a brush. Just dry the brush off a little bit, try and make the paint a bit stronger. Purpley pink. And pop that on. You can always give it a second coat when it's dry. And then on top of that is some yellow. If you're not sure, just go with what you can see and then the rest will map out. And then it moves across to some orange, which is quite fun. I've got a ready-made orange here. And it goes in a fan shape. So what I'll do is just put an arc in and then pull it up. And there's another one just here. more purple and some green I'm trying to work out the house leaks and things on the wall now there's quite a few of them and they've got a red edge and a green middle so I'm just mixing up some azillion crimson which she needs a little bit of orange added to it or Naples yellow or something just to take the edge off it and they these plants are quite complicated so I'm going to just put a spiral in and then they like petals on the outside because they're succulents this is an open picture, sort of half a landscape, half a seascape. So I'm not putting in botanical detail of the plants. I'm going to add a little bit more Naples yellow to the green I've got to separate the house leeks from nearby plants. The leaves of the house leeks are quite bulbous and form a pattern a bit like scales. To give some height, I'm dropping in some yellow between the orange top of this particular plant and the green bottom and the colours will naturally separate and give the indication of height. I'm using a different green to show the tight spiral of the house leek. It, to make it look three-dimensional it might need a second coat of paint. There's something small and dotty under this yellow plant so I'm just popping that in. And there's some lovely moss growing on the stones as well. So where the moss is growing I'm just going to pull it back a bit because it's just really the colour rather than anything else and this stone is quite light. I'll paint the stone in Davies Grey and a little bit of Naples Yellow. I'm now returning to the middle of the wall and putting on a few plants. I don't want to crowd it because the idea is you look from the front of the picture to the back of the picture. I'm returning to one of the plants I put in a few minutes ago and it's not completely dry and I'm just going to highlight it and the two colours will merge. And I'm just continuing in the same method of just finding things, claiming space and highlighting them as I work my way along the wall. Just adding some water to the brush and pulling out little shapes to indicate flower heads. It's not all yellow, so I'm going to drop some green in and work my way around the green plants and any shadows. Moving along, there's some plants that have got one colour at the top and a different one at the bottom. So I'm just going to drop in some very weak azillion crimson to indicate what's underneath. At this stage of the painting, I've just made a very weak, warmer green and I'm going along filling in spaces just to give a little bit of warmth or cover any remaining white paper that I don't want to show. For the front border, I'm going to drop in some water and then add brown and green to show the different heights of the plants. Followed by yellow and blue to try and give a curved effect to the planting. Having wet the paper, where the road is showing, I'm adding a mixture of blue and yellow ochre to just make it look like a light surface. It will look more authentic if I make sure the paint goes all the way up to the curb stones and I could just 
put in any darker areas that I think are needed. I put the chimneys in at a very early stage of the painting, so I'm now revisiting them and changing the tones a little by warming them up with a very thin coat of yellow ochre, just so they're more in harmony with the greens in the garden. I'm now going to highlight the plant in the middle of the foreground. Putting a few swift brush strokes on. To paint the middle of the picture, I'm referring to my paint chart again. I'm just putting a few green marks in the middle. I've indicated plants that are not dominant. Just a few highlights here and there to link it all together. You can keep going forever and ever. It's, you have to decide where to stop. 